Hello again and welcome back to Quiet RC. I'm Rob. Today we're going to talk about how you tackle these massive decaling projects and how I think is the best way to do it. Stay tuned. Oh, and by the way, they're called decals, not stickers. For those of you who are actually going to be building your own kit or possibly just tackling your first uh, body that you've actually painted, and maybe you've went out and, and bought one of these really nice Tamiya kits, the part where you get to putting the actual decals on can be extremely daunting. Some of these kits have upwards of 100 decals that need to be cut out and applied. So in this video, I'm gonna go through what I think is the best way to actually tackle this project, which is putting on all of these decals in the right place. And sometimes they can span, you know, all sorts of complex curves and you're putting uh, multiple decals together to make one kind of uh, single image on the side or something like that. So in this video, you'll see me go through a few different ways that I do this and how to accomplish it. And I really hope it helps everybody out. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get to it. At the end, I will talk a little bit more about uh, when you're doing your shelf queen and you wanna add a few more details to it. To start off with, you're obviously gonna need your decals, your instructions, and then the tools you're gonna need are an X-Acto knife, hobby knife with a brand new blade, a steel metal ruler, a hair dryer, not a heat gun. You need water with just a tiny bit of dish soap in it. I'll show you the mixture on that. And then you're gonna need some paper towels. The first thing that I like to do is actually trim all of the decals at once, rather than trimming then going and putting it on the body and then coming back and trimming one, going back and putting it on the body. Now, I've seen some people use, you know, laxative scissors or scissors of some kind to actually cut out each individual decal, which to me is insane. If anybody wants to drop in the comments below, what would be the reason for cutting them out versus just using a hobby knife to cut them on the sheet? Now, when I cut them on the sheet, I don't go all the way through, so I'm peeling them off the sheet. I mean, it's so much that they will actually cut and then go around the little number and include that and then later on cut off the number as they put it on the body. So I don't understand that. As I said, if somebody knows why they might do that, please drop that little tidbit below in the comments. But I go through and, uh, and trim all of them. And honestly, with these Tamiya decals, because there's so much, it may take me two or three or four sessions of sitting down and trimming them on because it is a lot. I use the metal straight edge on places that are straight. I'll bring it right up to the edge and I'll take my knife right along the edge there. And then you just kind of have to freehand the curves, things like that. Most Tamiya instructions will tell you to apply the stickers in numbered order. And this will kind of help you to know how to do kits that don't have numbers on them. For example, this 2002 BMW body that I'm doing doesn't actually have numbers that you go and order on. But the idea is that you are putting on kind of body details. So like window, window stripping, um, you know, headlamps, grills, things that are not actually like livery decals will go on first because in the real world, those would obviously already be on the car and then you'd put the de you know, any type of livery over those. So generally to me, it has you do that where you're putting that stuff on first and then you'll put on a lot of the livery and sponsorship decals. Now, one of the reasons that you want to use a new blade on your hobby knife is not just because it'll leave a nice clean cut on the actual decal, but it will actually allow you to not have to press so hard because it's so sharp, you can basically just kind of like lay it on there and it'll do all the work for you. If you have a dull blade, you have to press and then you're sitting here and you're cutting out 60 some odd decals pressing the entire time. That's another reason I don't understand the scissor thing because it just would like destroy my hand. 
be so hard. Another thing that you'll kind of learn along the way is with areas where you're going to have kind of overlapping decals to kind of create one large piece. You may actually want to trim just a little bit past the line here because you'll lay this one down first. And then I know that number seven here, for example, from the instructions is going to go on top of that to create one kind of surround around that front windshield. So you put this one down first, you come in here with a number seven and it actually lays over a little bit of a tail that you've kept on this piece. And it helps a little bit to kind of keep everything together. But again, that's just something that comes with mostly with experience. I wouldn't be able to sit down and tell you every single body kit, like where you should leave a little bit more, where you should trim it exactly. And worst case scenario, or if you just want to play it safe, just trim everything exactly and you'll see how you can kind of make up for some of those issues. On some of these Tamiya decal sheets, they will have instances where they will almost have kind of a bracket that will show you that these are all supposed to be cut out together. So you're not going to individually go in and cut each individual lettering here. You're just going to cut it out as a whole and then you can slap it on and it'll all be in the right, uh, right order. Now, this one especially is interesting because you have all of these right here and you have this kind of like a white spot here. And this is where the order that you actually put the decals onto the body matter. You'll notice these are 50 and 51 identical reversed because they're on either side of the, uh, of the body. So those are 50 and 51. And then right here you have these side markers that are number 63. So if you go and you look at the instructions for the body, it has 51 right here on this front fender behind the front uh, passenger wheel. And then 63 is actually on top of that white spot. So that is where this order comes, uh, comes into play. Some of them are a little bit, you know, not as important, but that's where it comes into play. The other thing that you'll see is you will see two of the same one with one number. And that just means that it's going onto the car uh, in two different places, but it's exactly the same. So even on the in instructions, so like this STI one here, you'll see that those are actually going on these, um, these covers, these headlight covers. So 55 and 55, even though they're the same, but then sometimes you'll have things like this, where it's number 44 and 44 on either side of the decal sheet. And you come over here and actually they'll have it marked out here, 44 and 44. So just kind of got to be a little mindful of it. Just a little bit of damp cloth just to kind of get any dust and such off of it. So we actually start with number five. Now we're primarily going to use the wet method since that's, that's what everybody could call it. And there's a couple ways to go about the wet method. There is absolutely soaking it and putting it on there and you're able to slide it all around and da 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 whatever until you're kind of ready and then you kind of squeeze it out. Or you can just do kind of a light spray. I usually do it off to the side. And basically what this does, it just allows you to kind of put it down and pick it back up without ruining the stickiness of it. I already want to put that. I just want to have a square for this ready. Then you can just squeeze it out. And as you squeeze out the water soap mixture, it sticks perfectly. I'll start going around doing that. Uh, let's see here. Number six, presumably somewhere on here. Six. All right. The bottom. So the bottom and then seven and eight are these parts right here as is shown here five six seven eight so basically doing the whole front uh, of this to start so i'm going to do that i'll come back uh when we have some different methods that we have to use so we have a little portion here coming up that's not necessarily tricky but what it has is it has these kind of deeper grooves that's going to make it difficult for you to just kind of push the decal into it. And that's where the hairdryer is going to come into play. Because these are vinyl decals, 
they have a little bit of stretch, a little bit of give to them. So you can kind of manipulate them into some more difficult areas, or if for whatever reason you come up just a little bit short, you can kind of stretch them a little bit and get them in place. That's where we're gonna use the, uh, the hair dryer. So let's, let's do that right now. We're squeezing that water out and then this bend right here was just a little bit more than the decal was set up for so we can hit it with some heat wow. should mention again do not use a heat gun it's too hot it'll melt the actual lexan and you can just use your fingernail to get it in there that's where i use one of these plastic tools here kind of the uh, stiffness of your fingernail. These are actually for installing car stereos and things like that. So now you can see that it's actually, it's a little hard to see, but you can see that it's actually in those recesses and around that edge there. And heating up the adhesive on the back of the vinyl will actually help it. Just to give you an idea of how helpful using the hair dryer is, I'm gonna take a look at this section right here there's a piece of trim that comes along the top here so you can kind of see that that's somewhat of a complex curve and it's raised up a little bit so let me show you that's the before obviously before i put it on i'll show you after i put it on but before the actual hair dryer here it is right now it's not too bad might even be able to might be hard to see what the issue is but i'll hit it with a hair dryer and you see a little bit of a difference here All right, should be nice and soft now. All right, now it really looks like it's part of the body there. You can see that it, it actually comes and curves over there really nicely. I mean, this is the minutia of the, the hobby that we like here, so it's all part of it. Silly little stuff like this. These slightly larger decals that are going to go on some of these places, these might be the ones where you're going to really kind of want to soak them so you can kind of slide them around to get them into position, um, especially when you're trying to kind of match it up with where it is on the other side and you don't have real good reference lines. So you kind of want to figure out where it goes. We're going to do that with this one. I'm going to kind of soak it off camera here because I don't want to drench my whole workbench here. But I don't know if you can see kind of how much liquid is on there. You can see I can set it down and, and, and move it all around here until I get it to kind of almost exactly where I want it to go. So that should be pretty good. And you see I've got a good crease here that I want to get this into. But again, we're going to go back to the hair dryer to do that. But let me squeeze more of the water. I mean, I'm literally getting on the bottom here. That's how much water I used, which is just fine you'll be able to get it all out. Hit it with this. And I can get it right in there. You see, I'm still squeezing water out here. So it's nice to have a paper towel because as you squeeze it out, it soaks it right up and it doesn't go back into that, underneath that decal. So now you see, nice and flat, goes into that, that body line there. Looks great. Maybe I'm hitting this hair dryer uh, trick a little too hard, but honestly, like it's such a lifesaver for getting some of this stuff to work. So for example, this rear tail light here, it actually has a slight curve this way as it goes around the corner. So this lifts lift it up as I put it on. And then you'll see here when I put this on, should do it on this side too anyways. So yeah, here. And to focus, 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 focus. Here, there we go. Kind of see that it's lifted up right there. It's not on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with a paper towel, hit it with the air dryer. You'll 
you'll see it'll wrinkle a little bit but as you start to smooth it out those wrinkles go away softened it up just enough you really work it here those wrinkles go away at least they should So you can see now it's not lifted away from the body there. Make sure you're paying attention when you cut some of these decals. They're very specific about some of the release that they have in here. So I've cut just right on that line there to make this little V because for this one, it does wrap fully around and it curves over. You do want to have this so it actually will kind of fold into it. This right here is where that little kind of V cut was. You put on the decal and you kind of use this line opposite where that V cut is as your reference line and you lay it down and you press it into place and then you kind of roll everything towards that V cut. Now you can see it's still rough here so obviously I'm going to hit it with a hairdryer. There we go. I mean it is incredible isn't it? I mean they know what they're doing when they create these. So the way this decal is cut, it's actually cut around here and here. So this all is actually part of decal, even though it's see-through. I can go in and cut little reliefs here because you won't actually see those. And that will give me a little bit of relief to squeeze some of the excess water out. I don't know if you can see it there. It's starting to come out a little bit and it'll help to lay down that decal. I'll hit this with the hair dryer and everything like that, go through all that and just keep working it in there to get it really nice into that groove. All right, here's a fun one. These actually go on the wing itself. This is the wing. It, I actually made it so you don't see the seam. I spray painted it with the same metallic. Um, I'll go into that a little bit later. There's a little bonus how to create really clean stuff here. Uh, but yeah, so this will go on the side, but you can just do it the same way. Water, pushing it out and uh, my favorite, the hairdryer. Another little trick that I'll use sometimes is I will use the tip of the hobby knife here to hold on to the decal. Uh, I'll still spray it. Just allows me to be even a little bit more precise in the placement here. Kind of hard to do it one-handed. Yeah. There we go. We are down to our last decal here. It is one of the side markers that goes on top of another decal. Again, highlighting the importance of going in order. Sometimes you don't need to use the wet method. You can just use very careful. Oh, you nail it. I think we got it. Beautiful, all done. With these Tamiya bodies, you have some extra detail that's nice. I went ahead and actually painted this. It was blue. They, they do tell you to paint it. I just used some regular polycarbonate because they asked for semi-gloss. Polycarbonate paint comes out as semi-gloss. Put it on here. Put that little O-ring on there. That'll keep it nice and tight. There we go. That's on there. This has a way that it mounts there, but I am actually going to hit this with clear coat. So it looks nice and shiny like the rest of the body. Extra shiny here. And it matches the body perfectly now. We are all finished. Dear God, it's beautiful. Now, if you really want to go the extra, extra mile, you can do panel lining here. I'll show that on another body here at the end of the, right at the end of the video. Mercedes 190E that I did a little while ago. So there you go. Just takes time, but it's very doable. I hope those, uh, those tips helped you out. The body that I've decaled up for this video uh, is actually on my XV02 rally chassis and I am gonna run it. So it's gonna get a little beat up. So while I enjoyed putting all the decals on, Eventually they are gonna get banged up a little bit. However, I do have my 
TAO2 retro build that I've done here with this uh, Dybul's Alt uh, green and gold paint scheme uh, on a 190E uh, Mercedes body. Now, some of the details that I've done here, which is more for a shelf queen, are putting in some of the body paneling lining. And for that, I've used this very specific thin, um, I think they call it like a craft tape. I'll have a little insert of it here and there'll be a link to it down below. And I've used that particular brand for both this matte black to do the panel lining. I've also used their product that is Chrome for some of my other bodies. For example, around the edge here of this uh, BMW 2002 Rally Edition that I made. Also with this body, uh, I've done where I uh, actually use the Tamiya modeling putty and put it uh, in between these parts here uh, after I've glued and screwed them together, sanded it down, I've primed uh, this, and then I use the same PS paint, but I paint the ABS plastic. Then I put the decals on, and then I do a clear coat with either uh, Mr. Super Clear or Tamiya's clear coat. And then that makes sure that the color is perfectly matched. I'm not trying to match a PS and TS. But once you put the clear coat on, it's as if you know, that paint is coming through a, a clear body. So it still retains that kind of shine. With this one, actually, I also de-chromed the chrome pieces that came in the body kit. The reason you do this is when you take them off the parts tree or the sprue, where you clip, you're actually going to clip and, and see where that uh, is no longer chromed. So I de-chromed the whole thing, primed, and then what you do is you use uh, this product. Um, I'll have the name of it here in a minute. And you do a gloss coat of black, and then you do their chrome over it, and it ends up looking quite chrome. This part is pretty good, but I did actually kind of rub part of it off, but looks great. On the wheels here, I did something similar where I just kind of buffed it a little bit with uh, some like 220 grit sandpaper and then sprayed it with the same gold that I used for the, the PS gold from Tamiya. Again, making sure that those colors match. Now, I wanted the, the wheels to appear a little bit more matte, so I didn't clear over those. As you can see with these, I've also done the tire decals, which I usually wouldn't do on a car that I'm actually going to run. Lastly, one of the things I did when I was painting is this is actually provided as a decal in the kit. However, in the body kit, however, what I did is I just used that decal as a template. And because I use my liquid mask technique, which I'll have a link to in this video, uh, my, my painting tutorial on using liquid mask, I'm actually able to paint this. And that way, I don't have to worry about if the decal gold matches the PS gold that you get through Tamiya. So it's actually painted around here rather than decaled. So I hope this video helped everybody kind of um, get a little more comfortable with the idea of tackling these huge Tamiya decal projects because it can be a little daunting when you pull out that sheet or two sheets and there's numbering all the way up through 100. So if you have any uh, questions about it or if you have ways that you like, and specifically, if you can explain why some people like to cut all the decals out, that's still a mystery to me, but you can leave it below. And lastly, please subscribe, like, and again, comment anything you may say about this. But hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helps. And we'll talk RC again later. Thank you.